who can become a citizen of the United States of America. The subject of immigration and citizenship in the United States is undeniably a contentious topic that engages and divides many Americans. According to Pew Research, the United States of America is home to over 40 million foreign-born immigrants. Nearly half are citizens of the United States, while another quarter are lawful permanent residents. It is only natural for such complex issues to elicit differing opinions and passionate debates. It is crucial to understand the historical evolution of the citizenship laws that are in place today in order to gain a comprehensive perspective on this matter. We've been over this. It's ancient history. The modern foundation of citizenship laws can be traced back to the United States Constitution, which grants Congress the power to establish a uniform rule of naturalization. Constitution is the biggest law we've got. Although the Constitution granted Congress this power, the Constitution was silent on what kind of uniform rule was to be created. This is where naturalization and immigration laws were formed over the years. After the Constitution, the first significant law regarding citizenship was the Naturalization Act of 1790, which limited naturalization to free white persons of good character who had resided in the country for at least two years. A constitution that denies the basic rights of citizenship to women and black people. This racial requirement reflected the prevailing attitudes and societal norms of that time. Thereafter, we got the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798, where a series of legislations enacted by the United States Congress during the presidency of Mr. John Adams. These acts aim to address concerns over national security and perceived threats posed by immigrants and political dissenters. The Alien Act authorized the president to deport any non-citizen deemed dangerous to the peace and safety of the United States or who were suspected of having hostile intent. We believe they have hostile intent. Hands to action stations. This act gave the executive branch significant power in determining who could enter or remain in the country, which sparked debates about due process and individual rights. While these acts were eventually repealed or expired, their legacy continues to influence discussions surrounding civil liberties versus national security in modern days. Hundred and fifty years ago, a slave by the name of Dred Scott sued to prove that he was a person and not a piece of property. Fast forward half a century and we have the Dred Scott Supreme Court decision. According to many scholars, it is the worst decision given by the High Court. The decision of the court was read in March of 1857. Chief Justice Roger Taney, a staunch supporter of slavery, wrote the majority opinion for the court. It stated that because Scott was black, he was not a citizen and therefore had no right to sue. Slavery has always been with us and is neither sinful nor immoral. What is interesting to note is that this case highlights how people understood citizenship during this time. For many people, citizenship of a state was different than citizenship of the United States. So a person could be a citizen of New York, but not a citizen of the United States. The Chief Justice in the Dred Scott decision stated, In discussing this question, we must not confound the rights of citizenship which a state may confer within its own limits, and the rights of citizenship as a member of the Union. In short, the Dred Scott decision discussed what the society considered about the citizenship laws of the United States and each state's rights and stated that black people were not citizens of the United States.
Slavery troubled me as long as I can remember. In a way, it never troubled my father. Though he hated it in his own fashion. Thereafter, the United States had the Civil War and a few years later, the 14th Amendment was passed. The 14th Amendment states that all persons born or naturalized in the United States are citizens of the U.S. The amendment intended to right the wrongs against African Americans and grant them citizenship. And in China, they never go to church. Less than two decades later, we have the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. This law was enacted in the United States and it stands as a significant milestone in the nation's history. A reminder of the complex socio-political dynamics that shaped American immigration policies. This landmark legislation marked the first time in U.S. history that a specific ethnic group was explicitly targeted and excluded from entry into the country. In addition, they were denied the possibility of obtaining citizenship. At its core, the Chinese Exclusion Act represented a response to economic anxieties and racial tensions that were prevalent during that era. The influx of Chinese immigrants seeking opportunities in various industries, particularly mining and railroad construction, triggered concerns among certain factions of society who feared competition for jobs and resources. Two years later, in 1884, the Supreme Court concluded that Native Americans were excluded from the 14th Amendment that stated that all persons born or naturalized in the United States were citizens of the United States. To remedy this, Congress in 1924 passed the Indian Citizen Act and this covered them by statute. Thereafter, 1924, Indians born in the United States were also deemed to be citizens of this country. Have the citizenship laws changed since this time? We have had several changes to immigration with the immigration laws of 1954 and 1997, but those have not dramatically change the laws about citizenship. Those laws change who can become a resident and how. The law as it is today generally grants citizenship for people who are born in any of the states of the United States of America. Secondly, even if a person was born outside of the United States, if their parents are US citizens, there are ways to get citizenship. What do you think of the United States citizenship laws? Have they gone too far? Do they not cover enough? Let me know in the comments.